Today is the International Day of Prayer for the persecuted church. So today, all over the world, there are thousands and maybe millions of Christians praying for the things that we will see today for the per people who go through persecution in their lives. The way that I've liked to run it this morning is I've done it it's on a video form and it will take the same time as what a normal service will do. So we'll finish at the normal time. What I would like to do today though is I would not like anybody to pray out loud. We, because that's what happens in the persecuted church where you'll find that people have to meet, they have to meet in secret. And so there won't be any singing out loud and there won't be praying any praying out loud. So what I would ask you to do, as you go through, you'll see there's a small video that shows you about what happens in that country. And then there's also some prayer points for you to be able to pray through. So I'll give you about two and a half to three minutes to be able to read through those prayer points and to be able to pray in your heart as to what's on your heart for that country. And I think we've, there's five, there's, as you'll see, there's, there's five countries that we've covered. And so that's really all I need to say. I won't need to say anything else, but the video will just speak for itself. Joel, if you would like to, to start it off, this is the first one. And then the first one will lead you into what, the, what it's all about. Cheers. This is Cappadocia. First mentioned in the Book of Acts, an ancient home for Christians for thousands of years. But it isn't just a home, it's also a place of refuge. God has used this place to help Christians for hundreds of years. Christians fleeing invaders, persecution, and certain death. And here, walking in the footsteps of thousands of faithful Christians, I'm reminded of how God used this place to keep his church alive and growing. But in many countries around the world, this is not ancient history. Millions of Christians face this reality on a daily basis. بدأوا الأحداث الأخيرة بقى إن هو بقى كل يومين لا ده بيخش جوه البيوت بيستهدفوا الرجال اللي موجودة جوه البيت وفي اثنين يعني والله وفيهم هم صحيين. Around the world today, over 360 million Christians suffer high levels of persecution and discrimination for their faith. That's one in seven Christians worldwide. The problem is impossible to overstate, and yet. Each of those people who suffers has their own Cappadocia, a secret place that God has provided a refuge and peace, because no Christian suffers alone. When brothers and sisters around the world stand with them, persecuted Christians know that even in the harshest of circumstances, they will not be forgotten and left without hope. That's part of our DNA as Christians. When you stand with God's persecuted people, you're bringing the reality of Cappadocia to Christians all over the world. Afradi Hassan ke bo man Hassan, Afradi Hassan ke با درد من گریه می کنند افرادی هستند که برای من گریه می کنند و دعا می کنند این برام خیلی قوت قلب بود چون که اگه اونجا قدرت خدا نباشه تو اون مکان شما نمی تونید طاقت بیارید 
This year, we've made it easier than ever for you to stand with your family in prayer with the 2022 World Watch List. As you read it, see what God does in your heart and what he does in the hearts of your brothers and sisters as he provides refuge as he's done here in Cappadocia for over a thousand years. Join us in 2022 because we're one church, one family. There are countries where Christians live in fear, where churches are bombed and houses burned, where following Jesus means sacrificing jobs, security, family. There are countries where you must keep your faith secret or it might get you killed. These are the countries of the Open Doors World Watch List. And here are the 10 countries where following Jesus costs the most. Number 10. India. Many extremists claim that to be Indian is to be Hindu. They want an India without religious minorities, and they are using violence to achieve it. Number 9. Iran. Iranian Christians must meet secretly. Being discovered could mean long sentences in appalling prisons. Number 8. Pakistan. Christians in Pakistan are considered second-class citizens. Innocent believers are falsely accused of blasphemy. Thousands of women are victims of kidnap and forced conversion. Number 7. Nigeria Nigeria is the country where Christians face the most outright violence. Many Christians have been killed or driven from their homes. Number 6. Eritrea more than 1,000 Christians are imprisoned for their faith in Eritrea. Some pastors have been locked up for over a decade without charge. Number 5. Yemen Yemeni culture is tribal. Those who leave the tribal faith could be banished or even killed. Number 4. Libya In this lawless land, Libyan Christians have to keep their faith secret or risk punishment, arrest, or death. Number 3. Somalia Islamist extremists consider Somali Christians high-value targets, so the tiny population of only a few hundred secret believers keep out of sight. Number 2. North Korea There are around 400,000 Christians in North Korea. All of them must hide their faith. Discovery means exile, execution, or being worked to death in horrific labor camps. Number 1. Afghanistan The Taliban takeover means that Afghanistan is the new number one, the most dangerous place in the world to be a Christian. Many Christians have become refugees. Those who remain must keep their faith utterly secret. There are countries where Christians live in fear, but fear can lead to courage, and courage leads to hope. At least 360 million Christians around the world experience high levels of persecution and discrimination, but they have not given up. And for over 65 years, Open Doors has stood with them. Where Christians are persecuted, our global underground networks supply smuggled Bibles and Christian books, spiritual care, emergency food and aid, training and legal advice. Where Christians are free, we work with local churches to raise our voices in prayer, to speak truth to those in power, to strengthen our persecuted family around the world. Because there are countries where Christians have to stay silent, and there are countries where Christians can make a noise. But we are all connected. We are all family, and together, we can help one another to follow Jesus, no matter the cost.
This is a message from a believer in Afghanistan. I grew up in Afghanistan. My family are secret believers. A few years ago, the Taliban came and they took my father away because he was a Christian. They tortured him and killed him. A few months later, my brother also disappeared. We never heard of him ever again. When the Taliban took over Afghanistan in August 2021, my mother and I managed to escape to another country. Our situation is desperate. We don't have food or extra clothes. I have money in my bank account, but I can't access it from here. My visa will expire soon. What will happen to me? I am praying I can leave this country and go somewhere safe. I may have to go into hiding or I'll be deported to Afghanistan where I may be killed. I feel alone and hopeless. I feel depressed. If I'm honest, how are my mother and I going to live? Thank God for your food and clothes and deliveries. You are financial support and your prayers and encouragement. You are a strand of hope to me. There's a chance I may live. The report details how the Workers' Party of Korea, led by Kim Jong-un, targets and tortures Christians, then goes to great lengths to conceal its crimes. The report spells out terror committed by the regime, designed to remove all traces of Christianity, and reveals the campaign to exterminate all Christian adherents and institutions has been brutally effective. North Korea's secret police, the Ministry of State Security, are incentivized with promotions when they apprehend Christians and other believers. Those charged with Christianity often face summary executions or are forced to live out the rest of their lives inside political prisoner camps. NJ Wang interviews North Korean defectors who have experienced or have firsthand knowledge of abuse. One victim who was arrested for the possession of a Bible was detained in a solitary confinement starved and beaten with a metal rod used for cleaning rifles. Christians are the most persecuted because of the faith's association with the U.S. and Europe. Undercover government spies search for any evidence of worship, making it impossible for Korean Christians to congregate without being reported. All the Christians that we interviewed before this report told us that they dared not practice their religion together with any other people. Even children are taught from a young age to be suspicious of Christianity. Schools, young children are taught that Christian missionaries are spies of the countries who seek opportunities to invade North Korea. And they are shown graphic images of missionaries sucking the blood of children to show how malicious they are. And they are taken to state-run exhibition halls where religious adherents are presented as murderers, spies, and where Bibles are displayed as trophies taken from enemies of the state. The big question, what can be done to deter these atrocities in a country so closed off from the world? Some experts say targeted sanctions are effective because Kim Jong-un cares what the world thinks of his regime, a fact demonstrated by show churches set up by the government to feign tolerance to the outside world and efforts to cover up persecution. There's a reason that they go to incredible lengths to conceal the political prison camps. There's a reason they have built uh, show churches and show temples um, and have actors present, uh, pretending congregations for foreign visitors in Pyongyang. Uh, there's a reason they respond so aggressively to human rights council resolutions that condemn their human rights record more broadly. And there's a reason why they push back uh, so hard against targeted human rights sanctions. Meanwhile, North Korean Christians and others continue to suffer and inspire. You know, it says something about the power of faith that in the face of that kind of um, uh, just egregious, ongoing, systematic uh, uh, persecution of people for their religious beliefs, 
people still choose to believe. Commissioner Davies says the world should know the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom is painstakingly documenting these abuses and the persecuted are not forgotten. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News. Somalia on the Horn of Africa is one of the most dangerous places in the world to be a Christian. Islamic law controls every aspect of daily life, and the country is the base for Islamist terror group Al-Shabaab. Christians run the risk of being killed by their supporters, or even their own families in so-called honor killings. Samuel is a former imam who was brought to faith in Jesus by a doctor. His father reacted by throwing him into an underground cell. Samuel was rescued by Christians and escaped the country. He began a new life and helped many others to come to know Jesus. But then extremists paid Samuel's wife thousands to go back to Somalia with their children. At an open air meeting, militants beat Samuel up and left him for dead. And now Al-Shabaab came after him. To track him down, they posted a video of Samuel preaching on YouTube. God used that to preach the gospel in places I could never reach, he says. Other Christians, fearing for their lives, began to desert him. But partners of Release International supported him. Now he's sharing a house with another Christian who, like Samuel, was abandoned by his wife and children. Every time I'm persecuted, says Samuel, I see God's hand in it. Somalia used to be a closed door. Now it's much more open. People have been shaken and now they're hungry to hear the gospel. Amanda is another Somali from a Muslim background. She was brought up to believe Christianity was evil and Christians were mean until she met some. They were kind and generous and Amanda told her husband. He told her she'd been to a dirty place and threw her in the shower. But Amanda went back to those Christians and gave her life to Christ. So her husband beat her, locked her in a room for a year, stopped her seeing her son, and finally left her. Partners of Release International are protecting these new Christians, helping them to find work and introducing them to others. The challenge to those of us living in freedom is how will we use the precious freedom we have? Will we hide away or will we take the courage to be bold?
At number four is Libya, a lawless land with no freedom of speech or belief. Those Christians known to be in Libya, 37,900 are migrant workers. They are permitted to meet to worship, but are often the subject of attacks by radical Islamists. It is illegal to bring Arabic Bibles into the country or to share the gospel with Muslims. Leaving Islam is considered a deep betrayal of Libyan identity. deep betrayal of Libyan identity. Under this canopy in Meerut, three hours from Delhi, Pastor Ajay Kumar holds a mass every Sunday. But for the last few months, he fears arrest for delivering sermons. In 2021, he was jailed just for practicing his religion. The police accused me of converting people to Christianity. They also said I received a lot of money to convert people. And that's why I was arrested. Then, at the police station, they said they arrested me under Section 151 for disrupting public peace. Christians account for over 2% of total population. They have lived in India since the 4th century, but in recent years, discrimination against the community is on the rise. A villager could stand up to beat us tomorrow, and everyone else could stand up with them. So we are frightened. In 2020, several Indian states, including Uttar Pradesh, implemented an anti-conversion law with the aim of banning religious conversions. This August, and another state, Himachal Pradesh, amended their law to punish those guilty of mass conversion with up to 10 years in prison. For John Dayal, an expert on religious minorities, these laws are intended to promote the Hindu nationalist agenda of the ruling party, the BJP. They empower anti-national forces, they empower anti-people groups, they empower fundamentalist groups. And in fact, it's like a dog whistle that it is fair game to attack and possibly kill Christians and Muslims. We are drafting a new constitution of India for Hindu Rashtra. Just last year, over 300 people were attacked by Hindu extremist groups on accusations of forced conversion across the country. One such victim is Pastor Kilom Kalyantet. He was beaten up in the streets of the capital. This video is of February 25th, where I was beaten. 
people tied up my hands. Some of them punched me and some of them kicked me. I regret this day. I'm always going to be worried about this day. I filed a complaint, but the police haven't taken action. Christian right groups have condemned the increasing hate crimes against the community. On August 16, the Indian government denied any targeted attacks on Christians. Just closing the word of prayer, shall we? Let me, Father, we just think of uh, all these people that we've been able to stand with in today, all across the world. Christians, Lord, people belonging to yourself, children of yours. Lord, we stand together. But yet, Lord, we thank you that we've been able to remember those whose lives are so different than ours, so difficult for the persecution that they go under. And so, Lord, we just thank you that we've been able to spend time praying for each one of them. And so, Lord, thank you. Thank you once more for the salvation that you've given us.